What's up guys, this is Ray and today we're talking about the 2019 Japanese movie The Flowers of Evil. It's directed by Iguchi Noboru, the director of some of my favorite kind of comedy horror movies uh, such as The Machine Girl and Mutant Girl Squad. And this movie is based off of an anime manga of which I haven't seen, but I've been hearing that the manga at least was pretty good. The anime, it's gotten some mixed reviews from what I've seen online. But uh, this live action adaptation stars Ito Kentaro and Tamashiro Tina. But before we dive into this review, if you are new to Eggman Ray, I upload video reviews and discussions every chance I get, mainly of Japanese movies or movies inspired by Japan. So if you're new to the channel and if you dig the content, you can help support this channel by checking out other videos featured here and also subscribing. Now back to the review, The Flowers of Evil. Uh, it's a story about this middle school dude by the name of Kasuga. And uh, he really loves reading books, especially the collection of poetry named The Flowers of Evil, of which this uh, story takes its namesake. And he has a crush on one of the popular girls in school by the name of Saeki. And one day after school, uh, he goes back to get something that he forgot in the classroom. No, one's, no one else is around. And he finds Saeki's gym clothes on the floor. So what does he do? Instead of putting them back in her locker, he just takes it, uh, takes some time to admire it, and even sniffs it. And uh, he does this thinking that no one else is watching him. But in fact, there was, there was actually somebody watching him. Uh, he hears someone uh, kind of run off and hide in the distance. And then this, and he reacts in panic. And instead of returning the clothes quickly to Saiki's locker, he steals the clothes and takes them home. So it turns out that the person who is watching Kasuga perform this perverted act is the, the school, the class weirdo by the name of Nakamura. And so Nakamura uh, basically blackmails Kasuga into basically into forming a contract of sorts with her. Otherwise, if he doesn't comply with his contract, she's going to spill the beans and reveal to the class who stole Saiki's clothes. So that's the gist of the story. I think there's a lot more layers to what I described, but that's at least how it starts. Now, when it comes to the positives of The Flowers of Evil, I think the story itself is very unique. And I think sometimes, you know, at first it's a, it was a bit kind of difficult to figure out what kind of narrative it was trying to do because, you know, from the, on the surface, just when you get started into the story, it seems like uh, Nakamura and Kasuga are having this kind of master-slave relationship. At least that's how I was interpreting it at first. But it gets pretty intense because um, the story, throughout the story, you have Kasuga in constant denial of himself, of co in constant denial of things that he does, of things that he thinks about, whereas you have Nakamura who's trying to drive this out of him, trying to like drive this self-denial out of him in some of the most extreme ways possible. And that being said, this movie kind of deals with a number of themes to help help to help out this narrative, you know, assuming I'm interpreting everything correctly from what I could take, it's, uh, you know, you have Kasuga dealing out trying to figure out how to deal with adolescence and you have themes when it comes to self-discovery, self-acceptance, and even uh, finding companionship in some weird and strange ways. But as I mentioned before, the way everything is handled uh, it's definitely done in a more, in a very unique fashion and it's definitely different from what you can find of a typical movie in a slice of life kind of genre which would deal with similar kinds of themes. And I think the performances by the two lead actors were very good. Like you have Ito Kentaro playing Kasuga and he comes off as a as an everyman. He even looks like an everyman. He has like a typical uh, just schoolboy look. At least that's what the movie ha has you that's what the story has you thinking at first. You you see Kasuga as an every as an every man but then he gets kind of caught up in his own perverted thoughts in his own darkness and then you have uh Tamashiro Tina who uh and I mentioned in my review of the movie Diner of which she was also playing the lead I think she's been coming up pretty recently when it comes to the roles that she does and I think you know this role is drastically different than what I've seen her do in uh, some of her previous movies especially Diner and even Sadako versus Kayako and she played a very interesting character in Nakamura. Like she's the weirdo in the class, she's the one who kind of sticks to herself, she stays in the corner and everyone just kind of talks mess about her and she cusses out the teacher whenever the teacher has anything to say to her and yeah she's just that kind of student and to see the dynamic between uh, Tamashiro 
Tina's Nakamura and Ito Kentaro's Kasuga, I think the way they the way the two worked with each other, the way the two bounced off each other and their chemistry was very interesting to see. Because in the end you have Kasuga's everyman and and uh and Nakamura's kind of weirdness. Like she just absorbs him into her storm of sorts. And I say that but ju just because there are plenty of moments when you have all this tension getting built up throughout the story, especially within Kasuga, and they just burst out like like a hurricane, you know, and to see it all come out in several scenes, you know, one scene that comes to mind is a scene in the classroom when they're vandalizing the entire classroom with ink. You know, moments like that, that's what really made the story for me. That's what really made it work. When it comes to the negatives of The Flowers of Evil, I don't really have much to say because, you know, through and through, I definitely, definitely enjoyed it, but, you know, it, this kind of goes back to how this is an adaptation of a manga. You know, you have manga, you have, you know, a lot of time to develop characters and develop story arcs, but in, in the movie you only have, you know, an average of two hours. So there's this character by the name of Tokiwa who you meet. Because, uh, well, first of all, the movie uh, here is, the story is, the story takes place over two time periods in Kasuga's life. You have his middle school years and his high school years. And a lot of the, the, the a lot of the moments with Nakamura takes place during his middle school years. And you kind of see the aftermath of, if anything, in his high school years. And throughout his high school years, you meet Tokiwa, who t ends up kind of being a, a love interest of sorts for Kasuga. Anyway, she's, I feel like her presence in it wasn't all that great. Like she was, kind of there, just kind of felt really squeezed in. Like I could tell that probably she had a much larger role in the manga, but in the movie, like she had a lot of key moments that really relied on some kind of payoff resulting in, you know, probably maybe 30 more minutes or like one more hour worth of development when it comes to um, Kasuga and Tokiwa's relationship. I just think it wasn't there. I thought her, her character being in there was just, I mean, it was, it wasn't, they just needed more time to flesh it all out. But overall, what do I have to say about The Flowers of Evil? I really enjoyed it. You know, it was much different. I had no idea what kind of story this was. I think, uh, I, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, maybe it was gonna be like a darker take on a slice of life uh, story. And I was half right, but there was a lot more to the story than just that kind of generalization. Like, I felt that there was enough shock value in this and just a lot of really, had explosive emotional moments that really can set it apart from a typical, uh, I keep going back to a typical slice of life story, a typical story that's centered, uh, that, that takes place in a school. Um, there's a, it doesn't even go, it is, it's not violent in any way, but there are a lot of dark moments as far as, uh, as far as the, the journeys that uh, Kasuga and Nakamura have to go through. And there's a bit sexual content, it doesn't show any skin, but there, there is, it does teeter uh, on that border a little bit. And it, it's hard to believe that a lot of these moments takes place when they're middle school. But you know, that just goes, I guess, that just goes with the story. That just, it just dives into that territory. But I think if you watch this movie, you take it as a story about growing up in a very dark fashion, because that's what it really felt like, that the that the middle school years were about Kasuga just diving into his darkness, and the high school years were about kind of his self-redemption, his, his coming out of it and kind of figuring himself out. And for me, that was the, the you know, how all those elements blended together. That for me, that was the biggest appeal of The Flowers of Evil. But anyways, yes, those are my thoughts on The Flowers of Evil. What did you guys think? And if you guys have seen this movie, how do you think it compares to the manga and anime? Let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on all the social media channels. And if you really dig my content, you know, you can always hit that notification bell to get updated whenever I upload a new video. And also, hey guys, I have a Patreon page. So if you really want to support me and this channel, feel free to contribute as a patron. And yeah, that's about it for me, guys. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for my patrons over Patreon for supporting me and in in anything and everything that I do. And for everyone, I'll catch you all again in the next video. Take it easy.